José Vizquerra. I am president and CEO for O3 Mining. We are a development company in Quebec with over 3 million ounces already in resources and already a PEA, which shows $423 million, 5% discount rate, $1,450 per ounce, a company with fundamental value and a great upside. Jose, good to see you again. So um, you, we saw you uh, a couple of months ago um, with a sort of technical um, deep dive into the, to the assets, which I think went quite well. And I recommend that people look at that if they want to try and understand um, what it is that you're doing and how you're going about it. But I wanted to catch up. Um, obviously, what I've noticed of, re, re, of recent times is you are either offloading or consolidating bits of the property. You're trying to you're trying to build a picture with the with the uh, with your holdings. So w- what's going on there, and can we expect to see more of that? Well, we believe in fundamental value, as uh, as you can imagine, Matt. Uh, we have been doing that for for the last two years and a half that we have been working with this company. Uh, we build a fundamental value on, with a PEA for for O3 mining in the case of Marvan. We divested some of our assets because we believe they fit into a better place in order to grow in terms of fundamental value, which is what we did with uh, Northern Gold and the asset that went into Monita Gold. Uh, We recently did the same thing with Cartier, where we put some of our assets into Cartier just because it fits better into that portfolio. And we don't consider, I think the word divesting seems that you're not interested. I think we, I prefer to call it, we reallocate our assets into better places where they can grow better. But, but explain what that means, because you, you know, you've, you've got yourself, okay, three million ounces, two, 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 was it two, two, two points, where are we at? Two, two, two point four, no, 2.3 million ounces on your, on measured and indicated, right? For, for you guys, this thing, you always said to me, this thing can be big. You know, and what I'm, the question I'm trying to answer is, can this be 5 million ounces? Can this be 10 million ounces? But then you've gone and offloaded in the East Cadillac property over to Cartier Resources with, um, with Philippe. So wh- why would you do that? Why is that more valuable that way? Well, first of all, the 10 million ounces or 15 million ounces can be only in the Marban area. I didn't need that area to come up with 10 million ounces. Philippe has 2 million ounces already at Cartier. The extensions of Cartier goes into our ground. They have been working there for the last 15 years. They know better the area. They know better the geology. We have done the best we could in that area, and we found interesting stuff, but fits better with that portfolio than in our portfolio. And we need to have our own team focused. Everything in our story will be a matter of being focused on being, um, will be a matter of delivering in terms of value and, uh, and executing. Fine, but how, do you, but how do you construct a deal that you, so that you benefit? It's not just a, you know, a, little, a little bit of cash on the side. Why is, why is this, the future value of this important to your shareholders today? Well, it's not cash on the side. If you see the deal with the guys from Monita, for example, uh, we now have 27% of an asset that by ourselves with 3 million ounces, together is 8 million ounces, and they can be 15 million ounces. Now it's 15 million ounces divided by three, that's 5 million ounces attributable to us. So you have grown already 2 million ounces. They go and they rally and they end up being $400 million, a third of that. That means that we are over $125 million in 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 our in our books. You put that into Cartier, we have 16% of Cartier. They have already 2 million ounces, which means that immediately, there is 16% of those 2 million ounces attributable to us, which we didn't have. So in the big context of things, you have added value immediately. Right. Okay. And then just to sorry, sorry to come back to this, because the, 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 like I say, the, the big question I need to understand is this, how does it go from where you are today to 5 million to 10 million? Okay. That, that, that's what I'm coming into this conversation trying to understand, right? So you've, you've done some consolidation to um, obviously with the, the East West property from, from M Gold Mining. Again, what does that do for you specifically? That is strategic. Uh, that's the extension of Marvan going to the southwest, uh, sorry, to the southeast. Um, do we know if we're going to find gold there? No, we don't. Uh, but we are just beside the pit. Uh, what are the chances? Hi. Uh, we have to do the work. But we also have all the northwest area of, uh, of, of Marvan, which we just started to drill. I mean, the reality is that this is a massive property where we were focused only 
on delivering on what we need to put this into production. Now we have done that. We have measured and indicated that move to fees. Now we move into the Northwest area to show how massive this is. And it will. And this is just a matter of time. Okay, so break that down for me. So you're going to show how massive, because again, lots of people come on, oh, I've got a district-wide opportunity. This is going to be huge. you got to show me how, because there's a kind of, the, the guys that do it well, there's a kind of robustness to how they go about it, the plan, how they execute that plan on all stages over a whatever certain timeline. You know, and I think the thing that's been thrown at you a lot is, oh, this is going to be in production way out. It's, it, I, I can't wait that long. Like, I don't understand how they're going to get there. So can you give that to me today? Because, you know, PA, nice, in, interesting numbers. Where does it go? We're not far from there. Uh, this will be in production by 2026. At the same time to your point, which is a very valid point, is, okay, show me how are you going to show me this potential? How, how are you going to get into 10 million ounces? And there is one thing that it is very obvious in Valdor, and this is just pure observation. There is a mine every kilometer to every two kilometers in this Carilla Lake break, period. And those mines are between a, 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 a million ounces to two million ounces. In some cases, like Canadian Malartic, over 14 million ounces. So if we have 10 kilometer strike length and you end up having a mine every kilometer, then you are. If it's a 2 million ounces, you already have 10 million ounces. And that's just a matter of being consistent and systematic in your exploration. And we have not one break, which, which is a Cadillac break, but we have the Norbenite and Marbenite break that goes into Kina, a mine that was thought it was destroyed and there was nothing else. And then they have a new deposit. You have the same break, the Cutter Lake break, where all these mines have been hosted. You have the Marbonite break, where we already have Marvin. I mean, what we have in our hands, in the case of Marvin, what we call the Marvin Engineering and the Greenfields Marvin, it's uh, it's very unique. Right, but it's, that seems almost too simplistic. I, I need to get into the weights here, um, which is... How do you do that? You know, whether it's one kilometer every one kilometer every two kilometers over a 10, 10 kilometer strike length, you've still got to find the stuff. You've got to have the money to be able to um, find the stuff, and then it's you've got to work out the economics of of that. So, what is that? Why is it twenty twenty six? What's happening between now and twenty twenty six? Which leads me to believe this could be what we pick a number uh, five million, ten million, whatever. But because five to five million becomes super attractive to people from outside the district. Anything less than that, I suspect you'd be going locally because it's it's a sort of top up for some of the bigger players in, in the district. So how do you t- optimize your ability to uh, maximize the return for your shareholders? So w- what's going to happen? Well, if we go back to the return to the shareholders per se, then you have to focus on the 2.3 million ounces. Why is that? Because your discounted free cash flow is going to be over 15 years. After year 15, you don't really contribute to a free cash flow. So when we talk about the 5 million ounces is, okay, where is your base? How big this can be? But as of right now, just by moving from 1.8 million ounces that we had in terms of inferred, measure and indicated, moving everything into measure and indicated, allow us, for instance, to believe that our production will not be 116,000 ounces that we had initially, but could be 150 thousand ounces in terms of production by 2026. To your point, what comes next? We have a PEA, we will have a pre-fees by the first week of September. We'll have a feasibility next year. We're talking already about 2023. We go in the permitting process by 2025 and then we start building. And then 2026, you're already in production. We have right now, and let's not forget about that part, we have pretty much $90 million between cash and equivalents, which is part of our job on building this value. You are one of the ones that keep repeating to me, like you didn't inherit that, but you have built it. So yeah, we did. Uh, and, 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 And we continue to do that. Okay, so let's look at what's going to feed into that um, PFS though. Okay, because I, I want to I want to see a sort of a market change from the the PEA because people people again companies come back here. People don't care about PEAs. That's a reality because there have been a lot of bullshit PEAs that did not represent anything, and and ours it was a different one, but no one cared, and that's okay. 
once you put the prefix and people realize, oh, actually it was true, and they were not they were not teasing us, and they were actually very very conservative in their numbers, then once they see a prefix, they know that this is this is real. Once you have a prefix, it's a very different moment because you go to fees, then you can then you can immediately finance the project and then there is no overhang on oh these guys have to go and raise money no because with the fees you can go and take that as well I, I, exactly my point and that you, you nail on the head there but here's the other component that people would be looking for from from a PA because you're going to be burdened with generic thoughts about PA, PA PFSs etc from from all the other companies who put them out in a certain way and I, I and we've spoken before I appreciate your PA was like was, was, was different a little bit more conservative and a bit more honest but nevertheless, perception is reality. The thing that they're going to be looking for is a market change between the PEA numbers and the PFS numbers. Because yes. just confirming your PEA numbers is not enough. They want to see the scale. You've got to show them the scale. So, so with the drilling that's going on, there's a bunch of infill drilling going on, I'm sure. But what's, what expansion drilling um, uh, and, and, or, or other types of drilling are you going to be able to talk about when you come up with the next feasibility? Well, I mean, in fact, I mean, moving from 1.8 million ounces to 2.3, doesn't come from the skies and uh, there were ounces that were killed there were other ounces that were made having 90 percent of conversion was really good having now not 93 percent in terms of recoveries but looking more into 96 percent of recovery from a metallurgical standpoint of view it is pointing towards the right direction we were focused on the pea more on what is the minimum capex i need to put this into production now we're focusing on what is the maximum amount of ounces we can actually get out of this deposit. Uh, and maybe that means that our capex will be higher, but doesn't matter. We will be able to reach that level, crossing that 150,000 ounces that everyone wants to see. So that's what the market wants, and that's what we'll give them. Okay, <laughs> good, good logic and a sensible thing to do. Um, Cost will go. You mentioned it there, okay? And I think again, it's kind of where people fear to tread at the moment, which is we're going to delay putting out the um, the next study because costs have been affected by you know we obviously had logistics issues um, in the last couple of years with with COVID etc. But inflation now thrown into the mix, costs across the board have gone up. Even in a jurisdiction like Quebec, where with, with, with hydro energy energy costs will have an effect on other components in your um, cap, capex. So, what what type of effect do you think it's going to have? Are we talking five percent on the costs? Are we talking fifteen percent on the costs? And what offsets that? Well, if, if I have the crystal ball, I can tell you. I don't know, but what I can tell you is that we were uh, conservative enough to use one thousand four hundred and fifty dollars per ounce in the gold price to do our PEA, which allow us now to have a little bit of flexibility. If we use sixteen hundred bucks per per ounce, no one will criticize us because it's still four hundred less than where gold is today. So I think that offset will help. Um, that is pretty much ten percent. Uh, even if you go 15%, just, just with the gold price, you, you, you're you still balancing that. That was the beauty of using conservative numbers at the very beginning. If we were using 1800 bucks gold, we could not think about that now. The project will be hung. That's not the case. Okay. So, and what else do you think you've got to prove to the market? Because you, 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 you're talking a kind of a robust language and say, if that's what the market wants, that's what we're going to give, give them. Do you think the market's right to be asking for, for specific things? Does that does it change your ability to build this the way that you feel I, it should be built? Or I, I I want to believe the market is always right. I mean, you are worth what the market is telling you are worth. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. I may say that I'm undervalued. It doesn't matter. That's that's what the market thinks. So the question is not is it okay to be there. It's why am I there, and uh, what does the market need? to change their view. And I think one of the views is, well, it's a PA. You know, PAs are usually like fluffy, fluffy, 50-50. Once you show a pre-fees, you're talking about something different. Once you show that your pits can actually be, be bigger, then you're showing something different. Once you show that you have potential for an underground mine on top of the mine that you already have as an open pit, that's an extra catalyst. And we'll, we have to build our own catalysts. And, uh, and I think this is a very unique story that will continue to just give more and more to investors and uh, will attract new investors because things are changing as well as we move 
from where we were in 2020 to where we are in 2022. 2020, there were a lot of investors that didn't believe in gold. Now there is more investors that believe in gold. There are investors that were not caring about assets that were in development. Now people are looking for assets in development. So the market changes as well. And if we continue to be in development now, of course, the question will be, okay, now these guys have to go and finance. Well, if you have a feasibility, then you can go through project financing through different avenues, even including private equity. So the thing is that we have options here. And more importantly, we have the team, we have the asset, and we have the money. Obviously, I agree with you. I think we're seeing more people coming into the equities in terms of the producers. Do you think developers are starting to um, see that uptick now? Absolutely, I think so. I, I I don't think so. I'm sure. Like we were we were two dollars for I don't know for a year or so. Finally, we are two two bucks thirty. So I mean, clearly there is a new new investors coming into the market. There is uh, now investors that actually believe that these assets that are in development will be in production because I mean either because gold will be two thousand or will be three thousand. And if that is the case, I mean, what is your best odds? Your best odds is to you know bet for those ones that will be in production, or uh, worst case scenario for me, but best case scenario for investors, it's been taken over by another company. Okay. Well, it, it, just on the money front, you talked about the, the 90 million of um, cash and securities available. Um, what was the spend plan between now and September and the PFS coming out? Uh, clearly, you're financed for the PFS, but what are you going to be doing precisely? Well, we'll, we'll see how, how things go. I mean, right now we have the money to go to a pre-fees. We have the money to continue doing more. Uh, if we have to sell equities, we, we can always sell equities as well. I mean, from, from the money we have. Uh, but I, I'm a firm believer that the money should go into the ground and money that goes into the ground has to be flow through. Right, okay. Which is how much, whether in dollars or meters? We have right now around $11.5 million still for the rest of the year, which is what I told two years ago that we were not going to raise and we have not raised money. You, 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 seem, you seem in a uh, kind of aggressive mood, Jose. <laughs> you no I, I i am just sure of what we have today i, I and and the more time it goes the, the the more the more assurance i have of the position where we are okay. i mean we're in a great position where you know we're going from a pre fees from a from a pa to a pre fees and we'll show the market where we are and we're going to show the market that the potential of this asset is not 2.3 million ounces which is what we have now but it's going to be 10 million ounces or what, more and what are the institutions so, saying to you then do they agree well, I mean, I think there is no better way to show the love than when you ask for money. And two years ago, I asked for money and I have an over demand of $60 million. We take 30, 35. So it, the institutions is not the problem. They believe in fundamental value. We need the market to believe so then we can actually be in a higher price. Okay. So, right, um, September, we can wait till September, but um, what, what should we be looking at in terms of those baby steps between now and then? What, what, well, we have finished the metallurgical results. We are finishing the geotechnical results. We're finishing the baseline studies. And um, yeah, first week of September, we should be ready to go. Well, I, I take everything that you've said aboard, but you know, for, well, let me ask you quite bluntly. So why do you think this is one of the better development stories, uh, gold development stories in Canada? Well, uh, I go back to these idea of the fundamental value, but let's break the fundamental value in different pieces. You have a low capex, $256 million, is one of the lowest from all the projects that are gonna be built in the next 10 years. Two, what's your cost of producing this? You're talking about $826 per ounce as of today. Gold price right now is 2,000 bucks. Doesn't matter if you don't know math. 2,000 minus 1,000, 1,000 bucks per each ounce that you're going to be producing. We have 2.3 million ounces already in measure and indicated. Let's break it up. What are the kind of resources that you have? Inferred, lowest category. Measure and indicated, highest category. What that happened to them? They convert from in resources to reserves, to probable and possible. Therefore, you have the ounces, you have a low capex with a very big margin. You transfer that from all the production costs that you're going to have and all your free cash flows, you bring that to the present, discounting that at a 5% discount rate, 
which is much more than what we have today in inflation. And that transferred into $423 million net present value. Our market cap right now is 150. So that means that you have an extra, you have this gap of $250 million from where we are to a fundamental value. And on top of that, just as a share on top of the pie, we already have $90 million in cash between cash and equivalents, cash and investments that we have made. That those investments, if we include Monita, if we include Cartier, if we include Kenora Land, if we include Troilus, if all those goes up, you're even having the upside through them, not only through us. So I, I, I think this is one of the better stories, not only because of the asset that we have, but what has been built as a company. I mean, this is not an improvised story. It's a very well thought. It's a story that everything that we have been saying, we have been executing as of today at 100%. Maybe tomorrow we miss a couple of things, but today we haven't missed anything. And I don't want to sound cocky. I'm just being honest and straightforward to, to everyone, to all of your investors. That's exactly where we are. So based on all the things and all the metrics I have given you, we have one of the best assets right now in Canada. Canada being a very safe jurisdiction, being in Quebec, which is one of the better ones within Canada, a place where you get an extra in terms of when you go and raise money, an area where you have green energy, an area where you have the people, where you have the infrastructure. What else do you want to have? I think we have one of the better projects right now in Canada, period. 